superb tee shot, an even better second shot. But stay with us. We'll go back and uh, replay this as we go out to 17 tee now in David Frost. And as poorly as David Frost has played, he could still win this championship. At the moment, he's two back coming here to the par 5, 17th. And Jerry Pate reminds me that instead of frost on the pumpkin, we've had some pumpkin on frost here at times this afternoon. <laughs> it's not bad for a youngster from Alabama. Good swing. It is just amazing what happens here to favorites at the Olympic Club. Craig Norman came to the post odds on today, even though he was trailing Frost by two at the time. But this has indeed been the graveyard of champions in the past, and now Norman comes to the tee. He can get home with that one. And while we wait for him to march down to fairway, Steve, let's continue with Jim here. Jim, uh, 17, uh, terrific uh, long play with the second shot. What happened? Uh, the, the putt was really quick, obviously, and... and uh, let's talk about your second okay, shot. Okay, second Great shot. Great fairway wood. Yeah, I was 238 to the front end of the wind, and uh, that, that was playing about... I guess about 260, and I hadn't hit too many good shots approaching. Drove it well every day, but uh, I full nuked this one. And <laughs> I knew it was really going to be good. I, it hit just short, I think, and, and, and bounced just on, and, and, you know, obviously I was excited that I got it on there, and in between the bunkers, I had a good putt at it. Were you trying to make the putt for Eagle or lag to make sure you made four? on your approach putt? Well, I wanted to give it a good, you know, a good roll, but it's, it's kind of a, a lag putt in a way, but once it gets going, it's on its own. It, you're not going to stop it. You're straight down grain, straight downhill. It looked like it was going to sneak in. It went by three and a half, four feet. How did you read the second putt? I played it straight, and uh, I just, I may not have hit it quite solid enough. It broke to the left a lot more than I thought it would. I may have pulled it just a tad, but uh, just a, yeah, a little bit of a yank there, but... Uh, you know, I had an awful, two awful good shots in there. I'm not disappointed by any means. I notice you still got your golf shoes on. Well, there's still a chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you think after your opening 63, when you had the five-shot lead, then you backed it up with 73, 72? A lot of people wrote you off, didn't they? Yes, they did. They usually do. But that's <laughs> that's the way it goes with me. I'm just. They wrote you off at the Ryder Cup. One guy thought it was a fluke round the uh, the first round, so I just kind of said, well, I played awfully well. I mean, I hit it, like Peter said, five to ten feet all day, and, and it, it got tougher as the weeks went on. And, you know, it just, I don't ever give up. At the Ryder Cup, you had a terrific uh, performance. You were two and one in matches. Mm -hmm. More particularly, you beat Seve on the final day, beat him three and two. What does that do for the career of Jim Gallagher? It's a big boost, no doubt. Moving to another level, it helped me today. You know, I just kind of thought back on things like that. You know, just don't get too far ahead of yourself. And uh, obviously the nerves are out there. You're playing for a lot of cash. You're playing to win. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'd had a chance. I mean, Greg, I don't know where he made bogey or double or something to give me a chance to get in there. And, and I had my opportunity on 17 to let it get away. But uh, there's still hold, two holes to play yet. Well, stick around. You may have more to play after that, too. That'll be all right. Brent? Well, Steve, as a par 5, the 17th has played as the 11th toughest hole overall, but the 10th toughest here today. And there has not been a single eagle on this hole in the four rounds of the Tour Championship. Amazing. Well, you heard Jim Gallagher allude to the fact that it was a lot faster putt than he thought it was. This is a much tougher pin position than people give it credit for.
David Frost with nearly 265 yards. He got all of it. The really tough thing about this second shot, if you're going for the green up there, is that it's pitched so severely from left to right, you know the ball is going to kick right. Even if you drive the ball in the fairway like Greg did, the ball is going to be below your feet, so that would certainly promote a left to right shot. You, you can see from there how uh, severely pitched that fairway is, as Mark mentioned, how high on the left it is, and it drops off severely to the right, and David Frost ball took a hard bounce and went into that front right bunker. with 240 to the front edge. Just a little more. Kick left. Well, great shot. Still to be determined. Who will win the $540,000? Thank you. Welcome to Paradise. The PGA Tour heads to Hawaii for one of golf's most scenic events. Coverage of the Lincoln Mercury Kapalua International begins Saturday on ABC. The drama continuing to unfold at the Tour Championship from above. The Goodyear Blimp. And the Goodyear Blimps log over 100,000 miles every year covering major sporting events. Cameraman high above today, Richard Morkel. And we certainly thank them for the gorgeous shots that we have had for all four days. So down we come to 17. Norman and Gallagher tied for the lead, and Greg in the greenside bunker trying to get home in two. Another perilous bunker shot for Greg. Very little green to work with. Jim Gallagher is all nerves. He's up very, very tight. Oh, happy. beautiful. <laughs> happy Halloween. Absolutely. And to the family back home watching, too. This Jimmy. is for Mary Lane, and I know you were a clown yesterday. Now I'm one. <laughs> Might be a much richer clown, though, we should tell you here. <laughs> Hopes her daddy is. <laughs> we'll see what happens as uh, Norman's safely up on the green here at 17 on the par 5. an idea on our IBM scoring recap. Look at his money per event and don't forget he also won the British Open Championship for the second time. Royal St. George's. What a classical performance that was. But here struggling a bit coming in on the back nine. Now David Frost. seven under and crowd that playoff should there be one so many things at stake here in the richest tournament player of the year if Norman wins it you would think that his peers would be voting for him but if he stumbles here then Nick Price Paul Azinger, jump a bit back in the picture, don't they? And if Greg Norman and Jim Gallagher do go to a playoff, Greg Norman would win the leading money winner title. But if should he happen to finish at six under and a tie for second, I'd, I don't think he'd have enough money to uh, to win the title. Looked all a little like me there, Brent, didn't it? <laughs> all the ghosts and the goblins starting to come out here. 
this Jimmy, putt is great. Jimmy, uh, is this about the same putt that, uh, that you had over there when you came back? I was more to the pin high. He's a little past pin high, but it's still equally as fast. He's coming straight down the hill there. Make it. Norman takes the lead. Two putt. They stay tied. Jimmy, you can see how it just rolls past there. I don't think there's any way to keep the ball, you know, within a foot or so. It's just it's just straight down grain, straight downhill, and it's sitting kind of on a little bit of a slope. It's just he hit a good putt. You know, it's just it's so fast. And Norman away. Must make this to stay tied with Jim for first. For 18th. Up ahead and remember Frost with an opportunity here to get himself back into a tie. Needs this birdie putt. That would pull him to within one. And it really seems almost unbelievable when you think of the way David Frost has played that he could come to this point and have this putt to get within one shot. Really was Greg Norman's tournament to win back at the 12th hole, I think. to within one. So here is our situation. We have two tied for the lead here in the Tour Championship. And well, I have an opportunity as Greg marches over toward the 18th tee. Let me remind you that November is golf month here on ABC. This coming Saturday and Sunday, we head to Hawaii for the Lincoln Mercury Kapalua International. A week later on Sunday, November 14th, We'll bring you the Maryland Shootout Championship. And on Thanksgiving weekend, it's golf's most entertaining event. John Daly, Fred Couples, Paul Azinger, and Payne Stewart tee it up in the Skins game all in November right here on ABC Sports. Not a bad ending to October either, is it? Well, as the players approach 18, very short little finishing hole, 347 yards. Everybody's choosing a long iron, two or three iron laying up to the little neck there being about a hundred yards only three birdies today and Greg Norman and David Frost each need a birdie very badly the pin is in the back you saw Gallagher earlier throw it all the way back but it got hung up in the back fringe anybody that comes up short that ball will pull all the way back to the front of the green
It is only fitting that in this the tour championship that the 30 best this year on the PGA Tour bring it right down to the final hole. <laughs> The game's great play golf's most smashing event. The Skins Game, Thanksgiving weekend on ABC Sports. I'm with Peter Jacobson, I'm Brent Musburger. We welcome you back to the final round of the Tour Championship. David Frost, one off the lead here at the finishing hole. From 155 yards. The ball barely carried the bunker and kicked forward. David's second shot was off a little bit of a downhill lie which I thought was going to help scoot the ball back to the pin Jim Gallagher has left our broadcast booth to go down and begin loosening up if there's a two or a three way tie they will go back to the 18th if still tied then out to the ninth and continue to play those two holes so Jim getting ready just in case meanwhile here is Greg Norman his second shot on the par four Ian Gallagher are tied right now has 133 yards to the hole. standing behind the 18th green behind the scoring tent and he did not see that shot from Greg Norman. Now as we bring Norman up to his perilously tricky situation here at the 18th in alphabetical order we can run through all 30 of the competitors and a grim face Norman now trudging up to the 18th. The 18th green sits in very in a little bit of a bowl as we see Jimmy Gallagher there autographing a few souvenirs. I'm a little surprised that Greg's ball didn't pull down off the hill. He put so much spin on his short irons. But you had a chance to look at his lie. It's nestled down in that grass. 
and it didn't pull back down, Peter. There's a little hollow pocket right there, and his ball settled down in it quickly. I think if it could have gotten a little impetus, it would have rolled on through that rough down onto the green. I think what he has to do with this shot now is I think he has to bounce this. I think he has to bounce this right over in this area here. You saw him looking. Here's his ball over here. He's going to try to bounce it off this hill and just kill it about there, and then it's going to trickle all the way to the hole. He certainly has his work cut out for him here. Peter, what about his chances of getting it up and down here? Well, you know, I would never count Greg Norman out at any time. Uh, th this guy doesn't win the golf tournaments and, and because he, he doesn't know how to get the ball up and down. Remember, he can still hit a bad pitch shot, get a bad bounce, and make a good putt. Peter, if you take a look at where Greg Norman is walking right now, I actually think he's thinking about hitting the ball to the back of the green over in this upper left-hand corner and then letting it roll back down to the flag from there. I don't think there's any way he can stop it if he plays it anywhere toward the flag at all. Well, you can see here the, you know, the bowl effect, as we, were, as we were talking about. Everything shoots down this way. So if he can get some, uh, you know, a pretty clean shot on the ball and get the club underneath, I think he can get some loft to get the ball up in the air. There, there's a good shot. You can see where he's going to go. All right, please. The most important putt of the year for Norman is about to occur. Make this, and it's a playoff. Miss it, the money title escapes him. In all likelihood, player of the year away from him. That's why people talk about the 18th hole at Olympic Club as being one of the best finishing holes. The ones who criticize it, they say it's too short and it's too easy. But you can't convince me of that. Looks pretty tough from here. Now let us not forget David Frost. It's not an easy birdie putt, but make it. And he joins Jim Gallagher in at seven under par. challenge Frost has here is to get the ball up to the hole. Seen a lot of players leave this putt short.
now a putt. Norman must make. There were no miracles here today against him. His fate has rested in his own hands this time all the way. This putt should break to the right ever so slightly. Gallagher Jr. wins the Tour Championship from Greenwood, Mississippi out of the University of Tennessee. The man who set the course record on Thursday with a 63 is your winner here today. <laughs> and one of the more bitter moments in a career that has been bittersweet. Nick Price wins the money title. Four bogeys on the back nine for Norman. Now we go to Judy Rankin. Judy. Jim, I, I never saw any pressure on your face today. All I saw was kind of a happy, upbeat. You were going after him. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of backed into that one. But, uh, yeah, I just, I, you know, I really got it going the back nine. And, and you're right. I was out there enjoying myself. And I think the Ryder Cup helped a lot with that. The fall of 93 has been very special for you. Very, very special. This has been a fabulous year. Thanks, David. Sorry about it, Greg. Thanks. Play, thanks. Right, Happiest Halloween. Oh, this is great. We can buy a lot of <laughs> trick-or-treat candy. <laughs> well, first it was Ben Hogan. Then it was Arnold Palmer. Tom Watson. And here today, it is Greg Norman who is upset. The Olympic Club does it again. And Jim Gallagher, Jr., congratulations on a wonderful triumph here at the Tour Championship. So long, everybody. The Tour Championship has been brought to you by UPS, the package delivery company more companies count on. IBM, there's never been a better time to do business with IBM. Mercedes-Benz, where safety, reliability, performance, and value are never optional. And Miller Sharps. Miller Sharps gives you great beer taste anytime. Tomorrow night on ABC Sports, quarterback Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills try to continue their sweep of Super Bowl opponents when they meet the Washington Redskins on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Later, stay tuned for your local news and world news Sunday over most of these ABC stations. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. A promotional fee has been paid to ABC Sports by United Airlines. All across the Pacific, they're playing our song. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. This is ABC.